Hi everyone, welcome to the latest episode of the Sunday Art Show. This week we're down on the north coast of Cornwall and unbelievable as it may seem when you when you can see how you know sunny and beautiful a day it is I actually filmed this footage in the middle of October. We went to a beach that uh, we haven't visited before it's a place called Widmouth and apparently it's one of the best spots in the country or possibly in Europe I can't remember for bodyboarding and surfing. Now in this little video uh, I don't really show you the true glory and the true beauty of the entire beach but I hope to include on the channel a video from the same location in the near future and that will give you a much better feel for uh, the incredible scenery that's there. And I hadn't actually intended to do a painting you know when I came to the beach this day because I didn't think it was going to be anywhere near warm enough to sit outside but I thought well I'll stick my watercolour paints in my bag and uh, when we got there it was just incredible uh, it was like a, a day in the middle of May really really warm I was able to sit on the beach quite happily there was no wind or anything so a really lovely spot on a really magical day as you can see I've started to block in using my thin washes of blue watercolour uh, the scene in front of me and I've selected this rather magnificent rock in the shallows of the Atlantic Ocean. I've got my little field easel set up and I'm just using some Winsor & Newton watercolour paints and if you saw the little uh, pig painting tutorial that I did the other week um, this is you know I'm, I'm new to watercolour really in that I hadn't used watercolours in a long long time sort of you know nearly 30 years I think before I did that little pig painting so this video is really just you know an opportunity if you want to to just sort of sit on the beach with me and see how this little experiment goes so what I'm doing is I, I've put in a, a, a pale blue wash for the sky I did the same thing for the rock and before I got going with the paints I'd used a water soluble pencil to just also in blue just to put in some loose line work so that I knew roughly the composition of my painting and having done that I'm now introducing other colors also in you know very light translucent washes to just gradually describe all the different colors I can see there and in general in watercolour, you know, the golden rule is you work from light to dark. So you start off with the very light tones and you gradually get darker and darker as you go through the painting. So this little scene is you know, one of contrasts really because the rock itself obviously isn't moving at all. It's very solid, very stable, very jagged and then the sea rolling in is moving constantly very fluid very rounded so when I'm painting the sea what I try to do is make, a, make a, an observation and put down very quickly a brush stroke which describes what I've seen in that observation but of course when I then go back to the sea a minute later uh, to paint another part of the ocean it will have changed and you know but by do including all of these little observations on top of each other hopefully I'll be able to create a sense of light and form which describes something of the scene in front of me. I'm using the same brushes here that I would use for my acrylic painting so I tend to use the synthetic brushes so the bristles are you know they're softer and more flexible than the hogs hair brushes uh, but they're stiff enough that they are, you can still, they're not, they're not very flimsy bristles, they're, they're, they're a happy medium if you like, they're, they're essentially acrylic or watercolour brushes uh, and for me these are the perfect balance between being able to put down smooth thin washes and also work in a more impasto style if I was still working in acrylic but, and, and they work really well for watercolour as well. So I'm currently just working on the, the main rock standing out there in the water. So I'm simply applying some burnt umber 
that I'm putting on in a very dilute fashion. And as I do this, I'm, you can see I'm kind of wiggling the brush from side to side or putting on a little patchwork of marks. So I'm trying to introduce an element of texture into the rock even at this early stage. Now here, having put down those lighter washes on the rock, I'm adding some darker colours and it may not come across on camera, but the rock actually has quite a variation of colour on it. There are some greens in there, there are some browns, even some light purples. And much like the way I go about painting animals, you'll know that if you look at some of my paintings of black cows or some of the videos on the channel, I try to introduce as, as wide a range of colour as I can but for the most part keeping things fairly subtle. So that's why I've introduced some green onto the rocks, just a touch of green at least, um, at the moment. I'm also changing the way I use the brush, so when I'm painting the rock, I'm tending to make my brush strokes put down a patch of paint which is more rectangular and more angular, and then when I paint the water, in general, the lines are more fluid and curved. Now one of the things um, I wanted to mention in this video was that uh, to say thank you to Chrissy from from Chrissy Canvas Art. She also has a YouTube channel. As I said, the name is Chrissy Canvas Art. And uh, one of the, I wanted to say thank you because when I first, in the very early days of my channel, I was just working indoors, working in my uh, yeah, working from home, and I didn't do any location videos at all. And I did a, a painting of Sidmouth, which is a, a seaside town on the south coast of Devon. And there was just a little bit of outdoor footage there. And Chrissy was kind enough to comment and say, oh, you know, I really enjoyed this. Uh, it was, you know, it was good to see somewhere outside of the uh, outside of the studio. Uh, you know, you, sh you should do more of these. And uh, so if you're looking for another YouTube art channel to follow and watch, you should definitely check out her channel. She does a huge range of different subjects and media. Uh, she's got a real passion for art and she has a wonderful presentation style as well. Uh, a lovely sort of conversational style of narration. She's very supportive to other artists. So do go and check out her channel. As I said, it's Chrissy Canvas Art and I'll put the link to her channel in the description below this video. But back to the, the coastal painting. You can see I've added even more darker tones now to the, to the rock. And I'm beginning to introduce, you can't really see it too well on camera actually because the camera angle is lower than my point of view because I'm, sat, I'm, sit, I'm sitting up on the beach. 
but I've started to introduce, sorry about my arm in the way of the camera there, but you'll see when I move that I've introduced uh, an element of reflection of that main rock in the water with a kind of deep purpley brown shadow. And also done the same thing for the little rock to the right. So you can see that I've started working with some watercolour marker pens now. And again, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that I often use these watercolour marker pens to put in my initial line work before I paint over them with acrylic paint. But uh, here I'm using watercolour marker on top of watercolour paint. And of course that works wonderfully well because they're designed to work together. So they're really good to just put in little details put in smooth lines rather than uh, you know using a brush it can be a, it's a lot easier to use a pen than a brush to get a nice smooth controlled line and of course because it's watercolor paint you're putting down if you don't like the line that you've created then you can just scrub over the line with a wet brush and you can move the paint around a bit or soften certain sections of that line one of the techniques I like to use which you'll see me do in just a moment is I've got these soft patches and washes of uh, colour representing the water in the foreground and then I'll go over those with the watercolour marker pens with some rather smoother curved lines in just a second. And I really love this technique because you won't be able to see on camera but if you're ever at the beach and you look at the waves lapping in in the very shallow water, if you look at the shadows underneath the little sections of white water you'll see that um, those shadows have a huge range of colors there are lots of purples and browns and oranges and blues and greens in there so 
I really like using the watercolour pens to kind of indicate those shadows and those lines, of those ripples in the water. As I said, I'll be doing that in just a second on screen. Uh, here we go. <laughs> So if you're interested, the, the set of watercolour paints I'm using is a set by Windsor & Newton. And if you go to WH Smith's, if you're based in the UK, or I imagine almost any art shop, Windsor & Newton, obviously a huge, very well established company. And they provide a really good range of watercolour travel kits or painting sets in tins. And you can get lots of different sizes from little you know, mini ones, which will fit very easily in your pocket to a full set you could use in the studio or out and about. Um, so well worth looking for. And, um, you know, that lasts a really long time and, you know, really good investment. So I'm really glad that I've returned to watercolour after all these years. It's just another avenue to explore. And for me, you know, one of the great joys of art is being able to do all these different techniques and all these different subjects. It really is a limitless endeavour and you're always learning. Um, so with that in mind, you know, this little study I've done here, I don't feel is my best work, but I'm very happy with it because it will always be a memory of this experience, this wonderful, unexpectedly warm and sunny day at the beach. The first time I've been to this particular beach, as I said, so it's a little bit like a diary, but instead of writing and painting and drawing away. So in years to come, I will always look back whenever I look back at this little painting, this little study then um, I'll always remember this day uh, so, and that for me that's a wonderful thing. So I'm just darkening now the reflections of the main rock and its little neighbour in the water and we're coming you know towards the end of my time on the beach. As I said this is just a quick study about roughly 15 minutes painting time sat on the sand and although I did decide to not do a major work up of this when I got back home You'll see in a minute that I did, in fact, uh, spend a couple of minutes putting some white acrylic paint on top. Here we go. Uh, so just adding a few lines of white water on top of my dried watercolour, just to add a little bit more sense of light and include some of the white water, which was obviously present there. So um, I think that's more or less all I have to say for this little painting. Uh, but what I will say is that uh, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button. And if you have any questions at all, then please remember to ask me in the comments below. Um, I will in future videos be looking to include more detail on the materials I'm using. So what I will try to do is include those in the descriptions below the videos. And I'll also try to include them more in the videos when I can. Um, if you're new here, though, please remember to subscribe to the channel. And once you've hit the subscribe button, you'll see a little bell symbol pop up. And if you press that, you'll get notified every time I post a new video. But in the meantime, uh, I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. And I'll leave you to watch the last 30 seconds of me painting away without me talking in your ear. So thank you very much again for watching.